evening welcome to our channel uh, today we are going to discuss ancient indian history ancient indian history for the all competitive examinations both the central service examinations as well as state service examinations that means upsc and also other psc examinations actually what is the ancient india and uh, i will cover the complete ancient india in one video please clearly listen that the syllabus of ancient india from he prehistoric age to harshavardhana that is almost to 5 lakhs bc prehistoric age starts with 5 lakhs bc to 647 ad almost up to 700 ad that is ancient indian history syllabus in this syllabus uh, covers prehistoric age indus valley civilization vedic age religious movements in the 6th century bc that is jainism and buddhism magadha rise of magadha 16 mahajanapadas mauryan empire the foreign invasions to india like uh, persian invasions greek invasions and their impact and foreign rule like kushanas satavahanas sangamis sungas kanvas and also gupta empire and their administrative system harshavardhana these are the topics which cover in ancient indian history coming to that point one by one in the what uh, we have to discuss in the ancient indian history yeah coming to the point of ancient in our uh, indian history initially coming to the point of the indian history history divides into three parts history divides into three parts based on the political changes and also religious changes political religious social cultural changes based on all these things so indian history divided into three parts like uh, ancient indian history ancient indian history this ancient indian history as i discuss now it covers from 5 lakhs bc to 700 bc up to the death of the harshavardhana this is ancient indian history first part after this medieval indian history medieval indian history medieval indian history it covers from 700 to 1707 bc 700 ad sorry 700 ad to 1707 ad that is medieval indian history next to modern indian history modern indian history it starts with the coming of europeans almost to 1500 bc ad in the year 1500 ad started coming up the europeans and not 1947 ad they left india so complete ancient india covers with the uh, hindu rules hindus dominated in ancient india medieval india muslims dominated in the medieval india muslims dominated in medieval india next modern india coming to the point of the modern india british british they dominated modern india that's why j l mills according to j l mills he said in he did, divided indian history like uh, hindu history muslim history british history so in this topic this is one division of the indian history another division of the indian history uh, coming to the point of another division uh, what is that uh, indian history divided into three parts based on the script indian history divided into three parts based on the script that is prehistoric period proto historic period historic period in the prehistoric period we did not find any script all 
stone ages would come under the prehistoric age stone ages paleolithic mesolithic neolithic chalcolithic all the ages comes under the prehistoric period because by that time there is no any literary evidences whenever literary evidence has started but we did not decipher the literary evidences that is indus valley civilization indus valley civilization hd sankalia hd sankalia he said indus valley civilization belongs to the proto historic period because indus valley civilization script we know the script but we cannot decipher the script script of the indus valley civilization nobody deciphered that means not it deciphered whenever script existed literary sources started literary sources started that is around 1500 bc first literary evidence that was the rigveda rigveda is the first literary evidence to know about indian history so from rigvedic period to present period that is what called as historical period only indus valley civilization that is around 300 bc to sorry 3000 bc to 1750 bc that was indus valley civilization that comes under the proto historic period bronze age civilization people they known the script but nobody deciphered historians did not understand that uh, script that's why that age fall on the prehistoric age these are the three divisions these three divisions divided based on the script earlier divisions based on the political economical religious changes yeah now coming to the point of oh, first topic of indian history that is prehistoric period this prehistoric period based on the tools what they used this divided into paleolithic mesolithic neolithic chalcolithic iron age would not come under the prehistoric here paleolithic is it might be 5 lakhs bc to 10000 bc and 10000 bc to 6000 bc mesolithic is 6000 to 1000 bc neolithic is sometimes neolithic age is also comes under the in the neolithic age uh, some areas we can find indus valley civilization and also some areas we can find like vedic age okay vedic age also vedic age also we can find here so like this uh, divided prehistoric age into different parts based on the two tools used by the people nature of the tools used by the people and also according to the nature of the change of climate prehistoric age also divided into this prehistoric age uh, uh, that is what first prehistoric age paleolithic this paleolithic age again divided into three parts lower paleolithic middle paleolithic upper paleolithic in the lower paleolithic people they used very very big stones a middle paleolithic period they used to somewhat flakes and the upper paleolithic period people they used to some polished somewhat polished tools and they known how to sharpen the tools like the to all these changed based on the using of the tools coming to the point of the main characteristics of the paleolithic age 
Paleolithic case comes under the Hallucinic case. Hallucinase. Hallucinase is completely covered with so, ice. This is ice age. The complete Paleolithic case would come under the ice age. This period. Histor uh, historians they believe that this period is uh, ice age. D during this period, evolution of humankind has been started. Evolution of humankind. Here in this period, first monocellular monocell. Monocell started from the water. So life start first time. Life started from the water. Monocell converted into polycell, polycell, that is multicell. Monocells converted into polycell, that is multicell. We know that uh, after this slowly first to uh, birds, trees, after evolution of all these things, humankind evaluated. Humankind evaluated from the ape. First humankind found at South Africa. South Africa, that is African continent and from South Africa to other parts, spread to the other parts. These people, South African people called as uh, Homo habilis. First people, they are called as Homo habilis. Homo habilis. Homo habilis. These people walked with four legs, not two legs, four legs, looks like a monkey. They look like a monkey. So after this uh, monkey, they bent and walked. Slowly they started to erect. That's why they are called as Homo erect. Homo erect. This Homo erectus finally changed into Homo sapiens. Homo sapiens. Homo sapiens were people, those who had brain. The remaining two people did not have brain. How to use, how to think, all these things. So these people found in the different places. These Homo sapiens were also called as Cro-Magnus. Cro these were also called as cro -Magnus. These people in the Indonesia, they are called as Physiocenanthropus. Indonesia. Indonesian people, they are called as Physiocenanthropus. Sinanthropus. In the Indonesia. India, they are called as Ramapithecus in India. Ancient man is called as Ramapithecus. Ramapithecus in India. In other parts, like France, France, these people, early people, early man in the France is called as Cro-Magnus. Cro-Magnus, early people in the France called as Cro-Magnus. And early people in the Germany, Germany, they are called as Neanderthal. Neanderthal. These are early people. Early people, Ramapithecus in India, early people, they found at uh, Sivalik Hills. Sivalik Hills. Found at Sivalik Hills in the lower Himalayas. They are called as lower Himalayas. And what are the characteristics of these people? They, they used big stools called quartiles. These people used big stone called as quartiles. That's why the pe person's people also call as quartiles man. This is a quartile stone. Rudimentary stone. And people used these stones for the purpose of hunting. 
hunting hunting and food gathering these were the main habits of this period almost male they went for the hunting female engaged for the food gathering what food they gathered like fruits edible fruits edible leaves like that different types of the foods they gathered so this pleistonic age period people they used quartz stone these stones and these tools were first time discovered in india by robert bruce put robert bruce put in 1863 he found at a place called pallavaram in the tamil nadu pallavaram the places called pallavaram and the places called athirampakkam these areas discovered early people's stones and tools that's why robert bruce put he was called as father of prehistory in india father of prehistory robert bruce put called as father of prehistory father of prehistory who was the father of history so herodotus herodotus he was called as herodotus called as father of history father of history and father of indian history father of indian history uh, who wrote to rajatarangini called as kalhana kalhana called as father of indian history father of indian history because uh, kalhana he wrote to indian history in chronological order before the kalhana no indian author concentrated on the chronological order of the indian history they did not concentrate on the chronological order of the indian history before kalhana all the indian writers like uh, uh, sources of coming to the point of the sources of indian history like vedas puranas either vedas or puranas or the ancient writers they did not concentrate on the they did not kept rulers or uh, what is the dynasties into chronological order that's why it become very difficult to reconstruct the indian history so these people early people early man in the world they lived in caves or they lived in the branches of the trees branches of the trees they did not know how to wear the dresses nude initially they were nude slowly they started to cover their body with the leaves and other skin articles like animal skins these people they did not aware of the agriculture they did not aware of the using of fire the using of the fire started in the end of the paleolithic age but the production of the fire started in the neolithic period using of fire is different from the production of the fire so these are the things and also these people they did not get any marriages they are uh, uh, like band they how a group called band nearly 30 to 40 people they were one group they lived like a groups even they did not know the sound how if big sound occurred they would be scattered from that place afraid of the sounds they did not have the knowledge of the sound and no marriage system existed they followed group sex these are the characteristics of people those who lived in the early that is paleolithic case their race is called as the negrito paleolithic people were belongs to the negrito type negrito race their race were called as negrito race paleolithic case is very lengthy that is from 5 lakhs bc to 
5 lakhs BC to 10,000 BC. Very, very lengthy period. That's why Hymeni Levy, Hymeni Levy, a writer called Hymeni Levy, what he said, if human, the complete human life from evolution to till today, if you make one hour picture, 59 minutes, only 59, uh, sorry, the complete 59 minutes duration for the Paleolithic age, one minute duration for the remaining period, 59 minutes, one, one hour movie, in that one hour movie, 59 minutes of the movie belongs to the Paleolithic, one minute movie belongs to the remaining. So, it was said by Hymeni Levy, that is Paleolithic. After the Paleolithic age, Paleolithic age period, uh, people so the major sites of the Paleolithic, Son, Sohan Valley, uh, Dar Desert, Kashmir, Mewar, Saurashtra, Gujarat, Central India, Deccan, Chota Nagpur Plateau, northern, north of the Kaveri River, Belan Valley in UP, these were important sites belongs to the Paleolithic. Next, we are coming to the point of the Mesolithic age. Maximum characteristics for it carry forward to the medieval Paleolithic age. Hunting and, but here fishing started. Adamgar, Bimbetka, these two were the most important places belongs to the Paleolithic age. Sorry, Mesolithic age. Meso means, Meso means, Micro. Lith means stone. Same in the Paleolithic age, Paleo means world. Lith means stone, world stone is. This is also Meso, micro, lith stones. They use the micro stones. Meso, lith, Paleo, lith, these words has been taken from the Greek. Root words of the Greek language. So these people, Mesolithic people, they belong to the hematic race, hematic tribe or hematic race. What I said to you, Paleolithic people belong to the Negrito race, Mesolithic belongs to the hematic race. So the race also changed. And use of these tools has been changed. They used very, very small tools. Why they used small tools? During the time of the Paleolithic period, they found more big animals. They hunted only big animals. For hunting big animals, they used big stones. And also big stones, big animals cannot move very fast. That's why uh, they used big stones to kill the big animals. Slowly big animals has been disappeared. They wanted to hunt small animals which are moving fast and far away distance. To throw a stone to the long distance, one should use very, very small tools. That's why microlith tools were used because of the hunting stage has been changed. Here, Developed for the flake industry. Flake industry. Flakes they used. Flake industry. Food gathering, hunting, fishing started here. And here, religion also started. Burial system also started from this region. Some areas like uh, Sarainahar and other areas. We find some uh, tombs. Flake industry found Sarainahar, Sarainahar by this is in the UP. First time found pottery here. Sarainahar by, oh, sorry, houses here. 
the earliest houses construction of the houses were found at uh, sarai nagar right and uh, other place like uh, adamgar adamgar in the adamgar it is uh, situated in the madhya pradesh first domestication of animal first domestication of animal dog first domesticated animal started at adamgar found at adamgar cattle raiding also and chopani mando the place called as chopani mando which was related which was situated in the up the earliest evidence of pottery found here earliest uh, 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 sorry evidence of pottery chopani mando pottery was absent at uh, langanas in the gujarat and in the kaimur region of the mirzapur these two areas pottery was absent the remaining areas so several areas pottery found here pottery made with hand hand made pottery remember not wheel made pottery hand made pottery started here at uh, chopani mando and other places of india Yeah, this is about me mesolithic age after the mesolithic age coming to the point of the neolithic age we know greek word neo means uh, new neolithic age is a new stone age neolithic age is new stone age neolithic age is considered as a neolithic revolution by garden child garden child called it as neolithic revolution because oh, there occurred so many changes here introduction of the lot of changes in the socio economical life of the human being we saw the food gathering in food gathering society converted into food production society first time started here food production food production has been started yeah if you come to the point of that uh, period sorry before going to the chalcolithic age we will discuss something about the neolithic period neolithic period neolithic period started plantation who started first plantation male or female who or both remember male is always in the busy with the their business was hunting they were busy with hunting while they busy with the hunting people the female female they were in the part of the their main role was to gather the food so in the form of the gathering food they started plantation if you plant a plant it cannot grow within a day or within weeks it takes more time so to protect the plants they started to stay at one place so this led for the settlement permanent settlement so for the permanent settlement they started to construct houses most of the mesolithic age characteristics would forward to the neolithic ages here construction of the houses were started construction of the house led for the permanent settlement and another major important thing pottery what the purpose of the pottery the main purpose of this pottery is preserve preserve for the preservation of the food food preservation pottery they discovered wheel in this period so wheel made pottery started during the neolithic period neolithic period food gathering neolithic period of wheel neolithic period permanent houses permanent construction of the houses here the people were proto astrologers 
these people were called as proto astrolites negrito hematic proto astrolite slowly changed the people style agriculture cattle raising and here uh, pottery will and also they started they known child uh, what's called as the children uh, how to raise the children neolithic people known raising of children especially this was called as raising of children it led for the increasing of population coming to the point of the paleolithic period or the mesolithic period these two period they did not know how to raise the children and here in the neolithic period they started milk and they started milk and milk products this milk and milk products were given to the children so children started to live more time here in the paleolithic and mesolithic period people they died with malnutrition they did not have idea of the rearing of children another major important mother goddess neolithic period started the worship of mother goddess mother goddess especially they started to worship linga and yoni linga and yoni according to their knowledge these two are the main cause for the creation of the world that's why they worshiped linga and yoni these are the characteristics of that period neolithic period important site burjham you have to remember this burjham burjham people they <coughs> followed pit dwelling you can find pit dwelling in the burjham along with this uh, other important areas belongs to the neolithic period baluchistan in the baluchistan especially in the baluchistan job nal kulli areas these were important areas belongs to the neolithic period after the neolithic period chalcolithic period here people they started to use copper chalco means copper that's why this is called as copper stone age here different areas different cultures they started like ahar culture malwa culture burjham culture baluchistan culture rajasthan different cultures are there in the rajasthan like different areas different cultures has been started here and the most important mostly uh, the other characteristics of neolithic period were carry forward here main important to use the metal copper metal was used remaining all food production agriculture all this uh, continued burjham a place belongs to the burjham situated in the jammu and kashmir this belongs to chalcolithic age here found a tomb in the tomb master buried with uh, buried along with dog suppose first master died later whenever dog died dog would be buried at the master's place master's tomb or if dog died early master died later the place where dog was buried in the same place master was also buried that continued in the bujha master plus dog and also later period it led for the uh, what is that to uh, burying some articles so this is a chalcolithic case after this indus valley civilization indus valley civilization you can divide into three parts so like uh, early phase mature phase later phase early early harappan civilization matured harappan civilization later late harappan civilization this is from 3300 to 
So this is uh, the extension of the Indus Valley village. Early sites were found at Padri, Kalibangan, Dolavira, Harappa, Balakot, Amri, Birana, Kodizi. These areas. Gumla. Occupied nearly 8 lakhs square kilometers. Over 8 lakhs square kilometers. The complete area 1.29 square kilometers. The complete area. The complete area looks like in the form of the triangle. Triangular form. Indus Valley Civilization extended north to Manda, Jammu Kashmir, south to Malwan, that is in the Gujarat, west to Sukta Jandar in the Belichistan. East Alangirpur in UP. These are the boundaries of Indus Valley Civilization. Indus Valley Civilization, it was the first urban civilization in India. The earliest, first James Levis, he discovered Indus Valley sites. So better known as Charles Mason. Charles Mason. He was the first person who discovered Indus Valley Civilization or Harappa Mound. Later, Alexander Cunningham. Alexander Cunningham, 1861, he established to Archaeological Survey of India. Later, after the Alexander Cunningham, it has been closed. The Archaeological Survey of India was established by Alexander Cunningham. This way, he was called as father of archaeology in India. Later, after this 1904, Lord Kajan, he reopened and he made ASI as the Archaeological Survey of India as a government organization, appointed a director general for that. First director of the Archaeological Survey of India, John Marshall, Sir John Marshall. Here in India, we find these sites like different areas, Kalibangan, Dolavira, Rangapur, Surkatoda, Banwari, Ropar, in Pakistan, Harappa, Mahenjodaro, Chanhudaro, this one found in the Pakistan. Different areas. This Harappan civilization, coming to the point of the contemporary civilizations of the Harappan civilization. Uh, contemporary civilizations. Like uh, Iraq civilization. This Iraq civilization is called as Mesopotamian civilization. Mesopotamian civilization, Iraq civilization. Mesopotamia civilization was the first civilization in the world. Next to Egypt civilization, Mesopotamia civilization lies between the two rivers, Tigris and the Euphrates. Egypt civilization on the river bank of the Nile. China civilization on the river bank of the Hoyang Ho, Hoyang Ho. Crete civilization on the river bank of the Danube, like this, uh, the contemporary civilizations related to the Indus Valley civilization. First site was Harappa, discovered by Zayaram Sahini in 1921. That's why the entire civilization is considered as Harappan civilization, located on the river bank of Ravi. Montgomery districts of Pakistan and the Punjab. Here in uh, Harappa, important 12 granaries were found at Harappa. That's why this city is called as a granary, city of granaries. Bullock cars, Yekka type bullock cars were also found at uh, Harappa. A sandstone of uh, human anatomy was also found at uh, Harappan civilization. In the Harappa, especially in the city of the Harappa. Most to discoveries, the most to findings of Harappan civilization were discovered by Sir Mortimer Wheeler. After this 1922, R.D. R.D. Banerjee, R.D. Banerjee discovered Mahinjodaro, that is called as Mound of Dates in the local Sindhu language. 
local Sindhi language it was called as Mount of Dates because it uh, has been what is that flooded for uh, seven more than seven times. Nine layers were found at Arappan civil uh, sorry Mahenjodaro. It was constructed for seven times, situated on the river bank of Indus, Larkana district of the Punjab, uh, sorry, Pakistan, Sindhu Pakistan. Here in the Mahindudaro, Great Bath, Great Granary, Dancing Girl, Pasupati Mahadeva, and a Bearded Man, a woven cloth. These all these were asked in different examinations, earliest examinations. These are most important. Great bath, great granary, bronze, dancing girl, all these were important. We can see all these things. Sir. So after the Mahindar, Sanudaro. Sanudaro also situated in the, on the river bank of Indus in uh, uh, pa pa Pakistan. And N.G. Mazundar discovered in 1931. Sanudaro is very famous for the bead makers factory. Footprints of dog chasing a cat, cat also found on the uh, bricks of the Sanudaro. Sanudaro, it was the only city without citadel absence of the citadel. What is citadel? Citadel is surrounded by the city, just like a fort wall, fortification of the city. Chanhudaru. It is a uh, ink pot also found at Chanhudaru. Chanhudaru is very, very famous for the bead making factory. Kalibangan means uh, black bang is a ghost in 1953. Rajasthan discovered uh, Kalibangan. In the Kalibangan fire altars found at Kalibangan, because it is uh, Rajasthan, located in the Rajasthan, camel bones were also found, wooden plow also found. The earliest two plowing fields, plowing, uh, uh, sorry, earliest plowed furrows, earliest plowed furrows were found at Kalibangan. And the sixth type jar a jar looks like a six or a, a pot looks like a six was found at kalibangan amulets were also found at kalibangan used amulets medical evidences they considered as the medical evidences lothal lothal is also another most important place situated in the gujarat in india on the river bank of the bhogava uh, Cambay of Gulf of Cambay. Here they made dockyard, artificial dockyard found at Lothal. And rice husk also found at fire altars to chess playing. Another most important a house faced entrance face towards the main road. All the cities of the Indus Valley civilization, no house faced towards the main road. Only houses faced toward the main roads were found at Lothal. This is also another important thing. After this, Banwali. Banwali, RS Bisto, it is located in the Hisar districts of Haryana. Beads were bead making factory found at Banwali. Banwali is very famous for the high yielding bali. A special type bali was found at Banwali. Here in the Banwali, we can find pre Harappan and Harappan culture. What is that? Matured Harappan and pre Harappan cultures were found at Banwali. That is also important thing related to the Banwali. Dolavira. Dolavira, another uh, site. Dolavira, it is another site. RS Bisto discovered in uh, Gujarat. It was the uh, earliest, latest discovery. Especially Dolavira several times asked about the hard water harvesting system found at that is water reservoir. Before discovery of Rakhi Gari, Dolavira was biggest to site the Indus Valley site in India. Dolavira, we can find three towns in the Dolavira. That is uh, three towns.
sides of the people were found poor middle class and upper class three types of the people were found at dolavina these are important uh, things related to dolavina and uh, these are the some areas like another area surkatoda harsh bones found at surkatoda kodizi kodizi a area which was uh, destroyed by the fire accident related to the indus valley civilization in the indus valley civilization you have to remember one thing special feature of the indus valley civilization is town planning special feature of the indus valley civilization is town planning peculiar feature of the indus valley civilization drainage system drainage system you will find only in the indus valley civilization no contemporary civilization you can find the drainage system the town planning and structures they constructed a town with a grid system looks like chess present day chandigarh present day only chandigarh looks like uh, this uh, uh, town plan upper town middle town lower town and granite is also found in the system houses were constructed with uh, bricks each and every house they have house outside the well outside the uh, bathrooms bathrooms and uh, kitchen faced towards the main road because the drainage system they constructed big drainage system even manholes were also manholes were also constructed here manholes used for the clearing and cleaning purpose man would uh, dip into that get into the manholes and uh, clearing whichever uh, closed whichever close the flow of the water it would be opened by the clearing and another thing their features of the agriculture was main feature of this in they constructed dams they also produced different uh, agricultural crops like uh, barley wheat wheat barley was main these two were the main crops of that period cotton was also found cotton belongs to the late harappan period around 1800 bc discovered the production of the cotton along with this they also they also produced rice rice has found at rangapur rangapur in gujarat found rice has rice evidences were also found at lothal rice evidences were found at also mahenjodaro mahenjodaro both were considered as the mound of deaths in local jade local languages lothal is also called as the mound of deaths mahenjodaro is also called as mound of deaths society of that period indus valley civilization society it was a class divided society some areas there were three classes some areas only two classes lower and upper and in the society we can find different peoples like proto astralites proto astralites alphines alphines mongolites mongolites and mediterraneans mediterraneans were more populated people these were also called as dravidians in the society based on the what is that sajjan marshall he said that the society is a matriarchal society found many places mother god is found many places of the indus valley civilization that's why it is called as mother dominated society mother dominated society matriarchal society after this uh, religion they did not follow certain religion especially the religion of this period uh, they worshiped mother goddess 
main deity mother goddess pasupati mahadeva also found at mahenjodaro mother goddess found all the places except kalibangan pasupati mahadeva found only one place mahenjodaro anas they worshiped like birds trees animals worshiped bird dove or pigeon worshiped tree that is peepal tree worshiped animal humped bull unicorn all these things they also believed life after the death that's why while they are burying the people they used to keep the things which are very very interested for the death person deceased person seals were also most important of that period before going to the seals political system oligarchy according to the stuart pigott it was oligarchy system oligarchy means ruled by different people ruled by different nobles this was stuart pigott according to the dd kosambi priest ruled this society according to the rs sharma and others merchants ruled this society you have to remember opinions oligarchy stuart figures priest to dd kosambi merchants are as sir seals of that period found different seals seals were manufactured with the steatite on the seals we will find a pictographic script script was called as pictographic it is also called as logographic logographic it was written from left to right and right to left left to right right to left left to right right to left so this is uh, like snake walk this what called as bowstrophedra this is called as bowstrophedra this style is script of the indus style is called as Indus Valley civilization declined because of uh, several causes. If they asked uh, how it declined, it declined because of the atmospheric changes. Uh, rivers dried up and other things. So this is about Indus Valley civilization. After the Indus Valley civilization, Vedic case. Vedic case can be divided into two parts. early vedic case and later vedic case this vedic case people were called as aryans aryans they composed vedas aryans they composed the vedas that is what called as vedic literature aryans they composed vedas called vedic literature called shruti and smruti vedic literature it is called as shruti and shruti vedas brahmanas aranyakas upanishads smruti vedangas vedangas upavedas upavedas sardasanas sardasanas uh epics there are two epics epics puranas all this would comes under the smruti lit shruti means to hear smruti means to re- remember vedas are four rigveda yajurveda samaveda adarvana veda brahmanas are nearly 17 aranyakas for the appendices of the brahmanas brahmanas deals with the rituals and cults aranyakas deals with the mystic science that is a uh, uh, what called as uh, aranyaka saranyakas they opposed the first brahmanical books opposed the brahmanas upanishads they deal with the karma theory upanishad means to sit at the foot of the teacher and learning Vedangas are six, Upavedas are four, Shardasnas are six, Epics two, Puranas eighteen. All these are the Vedic literature. 
after the vedic literature vedic period polity you have to compare early vedic polity into the later vedic polity early vedic period later vedic period early vedic period <coughs> they were, they lived as a tribal polity they followed the tribal polity king was called as rajan or vis this rajan or vis he was head of the praja and pasu praja and pasu called as gopala he was called as gopala here it has been changed territorial concept has been started here later vedic period territorial concept started gopala became bupala bupala means the head of the land so like that changes were occurred from here to here and early vedic period sabha samiti vidata sabha samiti vidata these were the village assemblies sabha ls assembly samiti can attend by anyone vidata can attend by even women women also attended for the vidata later vedic period sabha samiti vidata disappeared almost vidata completely disappeared sabha samiti the power of the sabha samiti has been declared because sabha and samiti dominated rulers they are going to set the rulers activity but here in the later vedic period this has been reduced the power of the king has been increased ashvamedha rajasuya like uh, different yagas were started during the later vedic period later vedic period from early vedic to later vedic period minister councils also increased bali baga are the taxes during this period that were continued in the later vedic period this is the political history of that period society early vedic period society later vedic period society this is the tribal society this is a, a normal uh, what is that caste divided society here there were three varnas here four varnas plus caste system existed brahmana kshatriya vaisya sudra brahmana kshatriya vaisya sudra here female women the position of the women was uh, very respectable position women in that all the rights and uh, here women deteriorated the position of the women was deteriorated in the later vedic period like that too, several changes occurred from early vedic period to later vedic period in the society economy economy also changed early vedic period people they lived in the sapta sindhu sapta sindhu later vedic people they lived in the ganga yamuna dob ganga yamuna dob in the ganga yamuna dob more than 100 cm so rainfall occurred at to ganga yamuna dob here in the sapta sindhu area 20 to 30 degrees c rainfall so that's why here they used to crop very less here crops were more fertile lands were more here they did not used to iron for the purpose of the agriculture later vedic period iron used for the agriculture agriculture has been developed to clear the lands extended agricultural lands so like this uh, economy also changed niska was the kind during this period gold kind this was continued satamana along with that satamana krishnala or other coins silver coins that was the economy of that period after the economy next to religion early vedic period later vedic period early vedic period religion was worshiping of the different gods they worshiped 33 gods indra indra he was the first place indra was megaster of all gods indra it lost its position in the later vedic period three people like uh, brahma vishnu maheshwara brahma vishnu maheshwara these three 
Trimurti system started in the latter Vedic period. Uh, 33 cards, so Indra, Agni, Varuna, Yama, all these people, they lost their importance in the latter Vedic period. Early Vedic period, worship, the main concept of the worship, the main aim of the worship is uh, to clear their physical desires and for the material gain. Here, the worship, ultimate aim of the worship for the moksha, started for the moksha. This is completely based on the Upanishads. So, like this, uh, religious developments were also started during that period. That is about the early Vedic period, later Vedic period. After the end of the later Vedic period, in 6th century BC, because of the Upanishads, especially Upanishads were the contradictory to the yeah, yeah sorry vedas vedas and upanishads both are contradicted vedic literature vedas they uh, proposed that they taught for the uh, vratas yajnas they advised for the yajnas but upanishads advised for the tapas you can call directly the God and your life not based on the what is that uh, but your life would be based on your karma your karma is main for your life or for your birth next birth Vedic Vedas what they said your next birth would be de depended upon your uh, rituals and cults. That is because of this karma theory. And also wisdom. The ultimate aim of the reaching the goal of moksha. If you wise, you will attain the moksha. What is moksha? Moksha, it will stop the next birth. There is no next birth, that is Moksha. That is, you are going to relieve. You are going to relieve from the clutches of the birth. This birth, you born as a humankind. In the next birth, you may born in other uh, form, like other animal or whatever it may be. So, people, they are going to suffer. People, they are going to afraid of the next birth. This birth, we are humankind. If the next birth is worst, what will be happen? So, that's why uh, moksha is uh, the ultimate aim of the birth of the humankind is moksha. If once you attain the moksha, you will never born. That is uh, a rebirth theory, the theory of the rebirth. So, based on this karma theory, based on the moksha, Buddhism was founded by the Gautama Buddha. Jainism was founded by Rishabhanada. Rishabhanada, the founder of the Jainism. Later period, Jainism was developed by the Vardhamana Mahavira. Vardhamana Mahavira. Gautama Buddha born in 563 BC at Kapilavastu in the Lumbini Park. His father was Suddhodana, mother Maya Devi. Maya Devi died after that. He was born and brought. He was brought up by his uh, auntie called Prajapati Gautami. That's why he was called as Gautama Buddha. At the age of the 29 years, Gautama Buddha, he left home for the knowing of eternal truth, eternal peace. So, at the age of the 35 years, so he realized, enlightened, he was called as Buddha, enlightened Buddha. Later, he started to teach to the different people. First preaching held at uh, Jinkalavan, that is uh, Deer Park at Varanasi. That is what called as Dharma Chakra Parivartana. Gautam Buddha, he died in 483 BC at Kusinara. He 
He taught four noble truths. Dukkha. Cast for the dukkha is desire. Desire is cast for the dukkha. If you leave dukkha, if you leave desires, if you left the desires, then you will attain moksha like that. Uh, four noble truths of the Buddha. And Vardhamana Mahavira, Vardhamana Mahavira, he born in 540 BC at uh, Kundagrama. He also went to the eternal life at the age of the 30 years. At the age of the 42 years, he enlightened. Next to, he started to preach. There were five principles, five noble truths of the Jainism. So in the Buddhism, Jainism, it will be more important for the examination point of view. Ask the several times, several questions on the Buddhism and Jainism. So after the Buddhism and Jainism, early kingdoms. There were first early kingdom known to the history was Haryanka kingdom. That Haryanka kingdom was established by the Bimbisara. Bimbisara. Bimbisara son Ajata Shetru. Ajata Shetru killed his father and um, came to the throne. Ajata Shetru son Vodayan. Vodayan also killed his father. That's why Haryanka dynasty is considered as a patriarchal dynasty. Killed father. After the Haryanka, next to Sishunaga dynasty. Shishunaga was founder of the Shishunaga dynasty. This dynasty important person Kala Soka. Kala Soka conducted second Buddhist council. First Buddhist council was conducted by the Ajata Shetru, belongs to the Haryanka dynasty. After the Shishunaga, next to Nanda, Nanda dynasty. Nanda dynasty was founded by Nanda dynasty was founded by the Nanda Mahapadmananda. 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 Nandas were considered as a low born Sudras. Last Nanda ruler, Dhananda. During the Dhananda period, they started foreign invasions, that is, Alexander invasion. These were the early kingdoms. After this, Dhananda was killed by the Mauryans. Mauryans established the great Mauryan Empire. Next, Persian and Greek invasions. Persians, they invaded. Persian Empire is called as the Achaemenid Empire. Achaemenian Empire. It was established by the Achaemenid Empire. was uh, established in the Persia. Darius I. Achaemenian dynasty was established by the Cyrus. Cyrus, so... Uh, Grandson Darius I, Darius I occupied Sindh in the India. Sindh was occupied in India. So, like this, so Persians occupied Sindh. Greek invasions were conducted by the Alexander. Alexander, he came to India in 327 BC, his invasions. He died in 323 BC, 323. Alexander invasion, Alexander fought with the porous, porous in India. So Alexander, he left and he died at Babylon area with the malaria. The great Alexander was assassinated by a small female mosquito. He was killed by the mosquito. Like this, the Persian and Greek invasions were occurred. Alexander invasion is caused for the next two, unification of India. Unification of India was unified under the uh, great ruler called Chandragupta Maurya established Mauryan dynasty. Chandragupta Maurya established Mauryan dynasty. So Chandragupta Maurya was founder during this period. Megasthenes visited India. Megasthenes. Megasthenes was sent by the Seleucus Nicator. Seleucus Nicator, <coughs> army commander of the Alexander, fought with Chandragupta Maurya. In the last life of the Chandragupta Maurya, he in, went to the Savan Belgola and there he led his last life by taking Salekana and he died. He was the only ruler in the entire Indian history who 
resigned for the cause of his son. After the Chandragupta Maurya, Bindusara ruled. After the Chandragupta Maurya is called as Sandro Cotus. Bindusara is called as Amitro Cotus or Amitra Gata. Amitro Cotus or Amitra Gata. After this Asoka, Asoka he was the great ruler in the Indian history, the entire Indian history. In he came to the throne in 269. At the ninth reign year 261 BC, he waged Kalinga war. After the Kalinga war, he stopped all the wars. And he followed a dharma. He introduced a dharma policy. He followed the dharma policy. Asoka. He was a great ruler in the Indian history. After this started the decline of Mauryans. Mauryan administrative system is more important. Mauryan administration system followed the Kautilya Sattashastra. In the Kautilya Sattashastra, he had divided into 15 parts and he also gave the information of the polity, political system of the Mauryans. After the Mauryans, post mauryan period during the post mauryan period there were different kingdoms in india india was uh, like a pieces in the north india and south india this area was uh, occupied by this area was ruled by first sungas after this sungas next kanvas and this Dakkan part was ruled by the Satavahanas. Satavahanas. And this was ruled by the Chedi kingdom. Kalinga was ruled by the Chedi kingdom. Kerala. Cheras. This Tamil Nadu and this area ruled by the Pandyas. Above the Pandyas, Cholas. Cholas they ruled. And here in the northwestern India, ruled by different foreign kingdoms like uh, Indo Greeks, Sekas, Pahlavas, and also Kushanas. These were different rulers. India was pieces into different uh, kingdoms. Among all these things, Satavahanas and Kushanas were most important. This Pandya, Chera, Chola, these were called as Sangamese. Sungas followed by the Sungas were, uh, sorry, Baurians were followed by the Sungas, Sungas were followed by the Kanvas. That is called as Magadha Kingdom. Northwestern India completely filled with the Indo Greeks and Sekas, all these things. So, this is post Mauryan period, the picture of the post Mauryan period of India. Next, after the post Mauryan period, Guptas, Gupta kingdom 319 to the 319, Guptas started from 319 to 550 AD. Founder of the Gupta, Gupta kingdom was Sri Gupta. Founder of the Gupta empire was Chandragupta I. Chandragupta I. Chandragupta I ruled from 319 to 335. He was the first ruler who started to struck the gold coins in India, first Indian ruler. Uh, his wife was the Kumara Devi, belongs to the Luchavi clan, is a very, very famous. Luchavi clan is, was very, very famous of that period. After the Chandragupta, Samudragupta ruled. Samudragupta. He was the greatest king of Guptas, Samudragupta. Samudra Gupta, he ruled from 335 to 380. He was considered as Indian Napoleon by V.S. Smith. V.S. Smith called him as Indian Napoleon. Samudra Gupta. Samudra Gupta, uh, he occupied many kingdoms like North Indian kingdoms, South Indian kingdoms, unified India politically. Samudra Gupta, he was called as Kaviraja. He performed Aswamedha Yaga. He performed Aswamedha Yaga. 
he issued asta type of the coins samudra gupta he was very good veena player he issued coins like playing veena after the samudra gupta his son chandra gupta too ruled chandra gupta too. he was also great king chandra gupta too he patronized oh, nine kings in his court that is called as navaratnas like kalidasu and others navaratnas like kalidas kalidas is considered as a mahakavi great poet abhignana sakuntala malavika agni mitra vikramoshwariyam raghuvamsham like uh, different books were uh, written by kalidas along with this kalidas aryabhatta aryabhatta wrote aryabhattiyam varaha mihira varaha mihira wrote to varaha mihira so varaha mihira aryabhatta and also brahmagupta varaha mihira bruha samhita brahmagupta brahma samhita aryabhatta aryabhattiyam all these three were the uh, what is that ru uh, astronomers they wrote about the space like a different different uh, poets lived in his court amara simha wrote uh, amara kosha amara kosha is the earliest dictionary in the sanskrit chandragupta one period his why uh, sorry his uh, daughter prabhavati gupta ruled prabhavati gupta ruled women ruler during the time of the chandragupta chandragupta one period the most important thing pahian he visited india pahian visited india around 400 to 410 chandragupta one period he shifted capital from pataliputra to ujjaini pataliputra to ujjaini ujjain and he completely eliminated sekas from india that's why he was called as sekar no sekar invasions after the chandragupta 2 period chandragupta 2 period chandragupta 2 he ruled on the name of the vikramaditya after the chandragupta maurya chandragupta 2 next to ruler was kumaragupta kumaragupta issued gold coins more gold coins kumaragupta period kumaragupta he developed nalanda university nalanda university kumaragupta son skandagupta skandagupta he issued girnar inscription also called as junagar inscription he repaired repaired sallekan sorry he repaired a lake and before the skanda gupta before the sanda gupta seka rudra damana seka rudra damana he also repaired the lake at girnar he issued first inscription called as asudasana lake first inscription junaga inscription first the complete fully Uh, sanskrit inscription issued by the rudradamana so like this so by the 550 ended the gupta's period gupta's period it is considered as uh, the period of the guptas is considered as golden age society society divided into caste sub castes like that the position of the women was completely declined during this period and gupta's period political system divided kingdom into different uh, a bhakti is the main bhaktis uparika next village like this divided into different parts gupta period provincial division of the gupta so uh, kingdom mainly during the gupta period feudalism increased they donated lands for the brahmins lands for the temples lands was given to the different army chiefs so 
during this period gupta's period mainly literature developed developed the literature and art and architecture art and architecture i already told to you like uh, kalidas varaha mihra and all these things wrote different books literature developed puranas mahabharata epics all these came into book form during the gupta period architecture three levels like dravidian style of architecture nagara style of architecture vesara style of architecture all these were uh, the foundation of all these styles architectural styles were started during the gupta period dasavatara temple at devgarh devgarh dasavatara temple was very very famous temple during the gupta period and ajanta caves ajanta caves the paintings of the ajanta caves 16 17 were belongs to gupta period 9 10 all these were belongs to gupta period like the gupta period even not only art, architecture but also space science was developed science and dev- technology was also developed during this period that's why this period is considered as the golden age after the gupta period post gupta period especially during the post gupta period that was the harsavardhana period harsha harsavardhana harsavardhana he ruled from 6062 647 he belongs to the vardhana dynasty vardhana dynasty is also called as pushyabhuti dynasty pushyabhuti dynasty during the time of the harsha period kuyan san visited india kuyan san this is most important harsha he was a writer he wrote three dramas nagaanandam ratnavali priyadarshika harsha's court poet was bana bana wrote harsha charita and harsha developed mahayana buddhism during the period of the harsha vajrayana buddhism also became very very famous at vikramasila university vikramasila university and harshavardhana he developed nalanda university he donated 200 villages for the nalanda university harshavardhana also conducted a maha moksha parishad that was a religious assembly so harshavardhana he was last great hindu emperor harsha followed administrative system of the guptas So last great emperor Harshavardhana he died in 647 after the death of the Harshavardhana he ruled from the Kanauj he developed the Kanauj he developed the Kanauj Kanauj was situated in the Madhya Pradesh that uh, Magadha to Madhya Pradesh shifted capital from Magadha to Madhya Pradesh so this is about ancient India like this you read ancient India once you start to write to notes many of the previous question paper questions are covered okay read carefully prepare notes and remember more points good luck